when you have standards, the people who don't have the same standards won't understand what it looks like. It'll look like animosity and create animosity for someone that does have standards and relentlessly sticks to them. Nowadays, the culture that we live in, it's almost like people are bragging when they slack off. Showing up late, I do what I want, like I'm fat and it's great. Like, no, like have standards isn't a conversation people have really anymore. Finally, it came to an, an end where it was standards had to change. All the things that I've been listening to for a year had to go into action. And that was mine was a forced change. You know, I, I, I want to talk today about, you know, having a standard. And, and, <laughs> and when you have standards, the people who don't have the same standards or people who don't have any standards won't understand what it looks like. It'll look like animosity and create animosity <laughs> for someone that does have standards and relentlessly sticks to them. Yeah. You know, we have core values and then we have a standard of excellence here in our company, in, in our marriage, in our lives, in our friendships. And, you know, uh, people are always quick to say to me, like, oh, you just cut people off quick. It's like, well, it's not cut that the I cut off. them off quick. It's that I've seen consistent trends in that person that lets me know their standards don't align with mine and I don't want to lower mine. And, and what that'll do is that'll piss somebody off because they'll be like, oh, he thinks he's better than us. And I don't think I'm better than anybody. How many times do you guys see me help Beto or mow the grass or go hop in the fucking water at the ranch when the ranch hand that I pay to do that shit didn't want to do it? I'm not better than fucking anybody. I'll go fucking do the work and I'll go do whatever it takes. But it's not that I think I'm better than anybody. It's just that I've set a standard. And I learned this from you. When we met, I had no standards, right? And you were like... And I would be like, Amy, why don't you do this? Because I have standards. I'm like, what does that even mean? Because I grew up without <laughs> standards. You know what I mean? Like, had I had standards early in life, I wouldn't have sold drugs. Had I had standards earlier in life, I wouldn't have got on drugs. Had I had standards earlier in life, I wouldn't have wound up in some of the situations that I've been. I would have chosen better mates like I have right now. I would have chosen better wives. And Again, not, if they listen, I'm not saying anything negative about them, right? I'm just saying because I was in that equation too, but I didn't have standards. But my wife has taught me standards in life. And one of the things, like a great example, and this is this is you. You have standards too, which is why we align so much. And she, I have her standards, which is why we have a great marriage, yeah. right? Not a perfect marriage. I don't believe there's a such thing that exists of that. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend on the internet like I'm perfect. There's nothing better than a good fight. There, there, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. And you Just strongly opinionated on and, certain things and, and we communicate very effectively. On and it. I'm very loud. So it's, it can yeah. seem like I'm angry, but I'm not. I'm just like very loud and, and passionate when I speak. It's like Pastor Keith once told me, he's like, when you're passionate and intense, people mistake that for anger. And that happens to me a lot, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, damn, why are you so mad? It's like, I'm, I'm not mad at all. I'm just like very passionate <laughs> yeah. about what I'm saying. You Nick know? Saban said that, started yeah. that first. He yeah. said that in, after a championship game. He's ripping into his boys for messing this play up. And they're like, why are you so angry on the sideline? He goes, that's passion. Yeah. yeah. That's passion. Yeah. I love what I do. Angry. You know, yeah. I, I rarely... And I don't even know when the last time I did this, but I'm rarely motherfucking people. It's just that I do yell and I am intense and I'm like a That's a, a verb I always like I don't I don't know what does that mean? Like you're just yelling at them? Like when you motherfuck, motherfuck someone? Yeah, talking down to them. Like I might oh. yell at somebody and it sound like I'm yelling. I might have a loud voice like towards being somebody and I sound angry, period. This is just what I've got from thirty years of cigarettes and shit like that, right? And weed and so everything this is, else. This is back to but, our reverse hood speak. So you're being condescending. Well, what I'm saying is I don't <laughs> I, I'm if I'm if I'm intense with the team, I'm not listen, you fucking losers. I don't talk to them like that. No. I don't call them right. dickheads and assholes and cocksuckers. I'm not motherfucking them. I'm not I'm not talking down on them and, and calling them names. I'm just intense when we get to the point point of the situation right there might be motherfuckers involved but i'm not motherfucking them right and so Best anyway case. back to the point my wife private school educated she's like i don't know what the hell he's talking about but the hood knows the trailer like, park and the hood condescend knows what i'm talking about so um so we have these two new people that start here Right. You hired them. We, we all agreed that they were going to be good fits for the team. Great looking people. And on day one, what happened, Sean? They were late. One of them didn't show up because I think didn't the other up. one they, had something going on. Yeah. They were late. They were late. We just how, had late? A how late were they, though? Six minutes. Six minutes. 
And and why did you not let those six? This is standing on business, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Yeah, no, why did you not let six minutes fly? Why did you not? It's okay. Be better next time. What exactly happened and why? Because a wise man once told me how you do anything is how you do everything. Wonder who that was. And so if I uh, if I let that kid <laughs> in six minutes late, my standards and and core values are now in the gray. Sean allows certain things. And I can't have that with what we're building. We have a team right here that is looking up to me and you and Amy. And if I falter and I give that, they get that edge, they'll take it because I push on, pr- press on them so hard right now. And, and I don't allow that from them. And so if I allow the new kid just because he's new, they're going to eat me up. I'm not going to mm-hmm. allow that. And then they're going to say, okay, we can, there's a little bit of gray area Sean plays in. And that's just not going to be allowed. That's and, why I did it. And that's a standard. Yes. Would you, would you call that a standard? Absolutely. It's a standard. That is the standard. My standards are higher than any rules. And the mm-hmm. standard here is that you're in that fucking room at 8.50 for a 9 o'clock meeting. Yes. We don't, that's an unspoken standard that everybody understands, right? No one's ever missed and it. And that's the second person you've locked out since you've been here, too. The, and both of them were not happy that you did that because no. it's embarrassing as fuck for them. No. Because they have no standards or not the same standards. And maybe that was tolerated where they were at their last job. And the young man said, well, I've already quit my other job. That's not my then problem. Then maybe it shouldn't have been late, you buddy. <laughs> well, I th- and, I and some standard. people think six minutes late is not late. But, right. but where I come from, like I come from a time where there wasn't the Internet and there wasn't cell phones. We had beepers. And if somebody told you to be somewhere, you were there 15 minutes early because when they swang through, they swang through. And there wasn't any way to contact them once mm-hmm. they got rolling down the road to know if they'd swang through and picked you up or not. You swing. know what I mean? Swang through. I never took that into consideration of why we were early like we, that with we, beepers. We, you're, beeper you're, you're my age. Yeah. So, yeah. so listen, we didn't have phones everywhere back then. So if you were told to be at the corner of 5th and 6th Street and you didn't make it to the corner of 5th and 6th Street, then then they assume maybe you got picked up, maybe you went on your own, maybe your mama took you. They, we had to make a lot of assumptions yeah. back That's then because we point. didn't have constant communication. But yeah. if you were there 10 minutes early and they swang through on time or they come through on time, then, you know, oh, okay, then I know everything's okay because he was here on time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, my dad, my stepdad was very like, if you're not on time, you're late. If you're not early, you're late, Yeah, you know, and and – you know, like he would, we were supposed to open the car wash at 7.30. We showed up every day at 7.15. Now I realize that's because he got paid hourly. <laughs> and so that was an extra 15 minutes that he rolled into every it. Day. But that's how that worked back yeah. in the day. You yeah. know, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any excuse for being late outside of like a medical emergency or something right. with the family, right? Because there is, I slept in, you didn't judge your time, right? And then when you're building what we're building and how fast we rebuilt what we had to rebuild if those standards aren't in play and anybody would have got a pass because we're new or, um, or the fear of, okay, we really need these people right now yep. and we're rebuilding and all this right. shit's going on. And if we would have allowed that, then we wouldn't have rebuilt as fast as we've rebuilt. The numbers we'll do this month are absolutely amazing with a brand new team four months ago. Unreal. And that standard Unreal. came from the very beginning of constantly text messaging him. I'm not a one to micromanage, but I constantly text text him all day. Constant um, communication, I call him from not my office. Yeah, absolutely. I call him from my office, ask him where they're at. I text him from my office, where are you at? Then I make the rounds to make sure that they're they're doing the right things, close deals from them. I'm on the front line with them. I love it. And so that standard, they can't look at me or you or you and go, bro, they don't do that. I'm the first one here normally. Last one, well, second, maybe to her. The last one to leave, so the standard's being set. Dude, can they work nine to five here and make a ton of money? Yeah, I'm cool with that. That's cool with me. If they, but you better put them. Yeah, hours. you better yeah. put the money up, yep. and you take your weekends. Take your weekends off, yep. but you better be winning. Like you if know? Sasser shows up five minutes late to a meeting, a he's not like that. No. But if he does. And it, and it rarely, if it, it's never happened, but if it rarely happened, it's like, cool, when you're putting up fucking half a million dollars a month in sales, you can make your own Absolutely. fucking rules too. You know, he's Absolutely. an independent contractor at this point. He does whatever the hell he wants, right? Well, he set a really high standard for modeling your um, work ethic from money to the way he carries himself yep. already. Yes. It, that kid's got but, it going on. He's but 24. But if we let the new guy do it, mm-hmm. then, yeah. then the people that have been here for a few months, they're like, oh. I didn't know I could be six minutes late. And now mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're leaving. They're pushing the mm-hmm. snooze button, which is not G-code material, nope. by the way. You know, and it's not how we, it's not the path to greatness that we're trying to develop these people to be. And and if we let somebody show up six minutes. But here's the flip side of that. That that person gets angry at you. 
but I was only six minutes late. I, I'd left my house. Remember the one kid a couple of months ago? He's like, well, I had to go get breakfast. Well, wake up earlier and eat, bitch. That's funny. <laughs> the fuck? I mean, you're going to prioritize breakfast <clears throat> over the fucking company yeah. time that you're supposed to be here? Yeah. You know, when people... Well, what planet is that a valid excuse? Well, I had to eat. I ate too. I this woke like up fucking 30 COVID minutes area. early and ate yeah. Yeah. on the way here. Yeah. yeah. At, uh, standards too is an addiction. Um, yeah. Because I, ra- I, I, roll, I rolled many years making a lot of money without them, and it didn't serve me well. And so when I replaced addictions for addiction, like, you know, when I quit drinking, got in the gym and started carrying standards, that, that's the same type of um, working atmosphere that I've created when I was drinking off the chain, making 300 grand a year in the automotive space, doing whatever I wanted. That's a standard, too. Yeah. But then when I gave up a the drinking one. and got, yeah, a very low one. Um, low in all areas of life, but when I got into um, the self development space, when I met your your when I read your book in t- uh, 2018, that standard that was set in my mind, I knew what I had to become. I did not realize how hard it was going to be to carry on um, that standard with the world that we're in today, and then also how hard it's getting to keep continuing that on. Because once you get to that level, it seems like it's harder and harder because the old life tries to pull you back. Yeah. Sleeping right. in, not right. going to the gym. Goggins calls yeah. it the bitch voice. The just, bitch voice. The old life bit. is right there. It's like a magnet trying to pull you back. It's strong. And if you're not constantly in momentum with your standards, then you're screwed. Because the rules set in this society are for the weak. They're for the weak. Because those rules, I would never fought, abide by those rules because my standards are set higher than the rules yep. that, uh, that I play by. And then in the workplace, there's too many times where HR gets involved. So everybody's like, fuck it. Uh, there's nothing I can do here. I'm HR, so you will fucking do it. You can get you can get gone. You know, beat it. Um, but I think a lot of people have to deal with standards in the HR world or in corporate that they just can't keep because everybody complains. The world's gotten soft. Employees are terrible to deal with. No, I think and it's so a culture it's a piece. I feel like nowadays the culture that we live in, it's almost like people are bragging when they slack off. Or like the bragging when they call out and they're actually not sick, like showing up late, I do what I want, like I'm fat and it's great. Like, no, like have standards isn't a conversation people have really anymore. Like even if, so we were, we were, had people over, we had First Wives Club on from the 90s and you look at those ladies that like they had their shit together. They were like all done up. And nowadays you look back at that and you're like, oh my God, is that the Renaissance era? Like they're all done up. <laughs> nowadays people don't look like that. Like this is dressed up and like I'm in like a cotton tee and jeans. Like I use. But then nowadays if I walk into Target right now, I will look a hella Half dressed up. Half people are in pajamas. Half of them are in pajamas. Yeah, crazy, it is so right? weird. Like, and there is a weight limit to yoga pants. Just, <laughs> I'm going to put that out there. Uh, I, I okay, you they, they have like watch two out. X3 That's a We know you ain't been doing yoga, motherfucker. Yeah. We yeah. know you Quit. ain't been doing yoga. And you're wearing the same. Yeah. You can tell they wore them like five days straight because yeah. there's stains on them and shit. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's awful. It's yeah. disgusting. It's actually you a look that close. travesty. You look that close. I pay attention to people. When they're tight. Yes. When they're tight, everything's close. I judge. I judge people. I've been judged most of my life. That was not where I intended this to go. Okay. Where, where, where were we going but, with this? But here's the I'm thing. I'm in a good like, place. <laughs> oh, sorry. Not like, meh. But, but, <laughs> but <laughs> a person who holds a stand. So you set a standard, okay? And then you hold the standard, and it pisses off the people who don't hold that standard. It's interesting yeah. you mentioned That's why you HR. don't have 25 employees right now. Well, right. It's, it's interesting that you we have 28, actually. No, I mean sales. It uh, just okay. sells alone yeah, because uh, you can't find somebody to keep the standards it, you run at. And right. I will not tolerate anything less because it'll mess up my bird dogs. For exactly. That's yes. a reference from last week, everybody. And so, <laughs> so here's the thing. like You mentioned HR. I have a friend, and uh, he is a general manager for top five home builder in America, largest home builder, right? Mm-hmm. And he tells me the other day, he says, I can't make it because I have to go to a corporate meeting. And I'm like, why? He goes, I have an employee who refuses to be on time and they will not let me fire this employee because it's an African-American female. Yeah, I understand. And he's like, we're such a big company that they don't want the flag back. He says, she's showing up 30, 45 minutes late. One day didn't even come in. I wrote her up five times and they told me to get over it because... Because they don't want the bad look of having an African-American female fired. 
you know so but but what does that do for that lady let's take race and gender off of the equation right but what does it do for that person it's not making that person a better person it's making concessions for their flaws and lack of responsibility right. which is bad for the culture of that company and then my friend that's having this conversation with me he's now going well why do i show up then why, why exactly and and why does this person show up then and why if this person can get away with it and they can't fire them so now you got clients meeting you at nine and everybody's like showing up at nine thirty. now you got pissed off clients right you got clients that want to come in at nine thirty. they're showing up at nine forty five. you got clients going dude i'm trying to build a half a million dollar house why 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 you leave me hanging for 15 minutes they don't realize how toxic that is but you're right people worry about what it looks like look i don't care if you yellow green orange purple fucking if you're not on time you're not fucking here right mm -hmm. you know i don't care if you're a female a male or, or both of those things at the same time if that's possible i don't give a shit the standard's the standard but i also don't care if you're those things and you meet the standard and you do do your job good yeah that's yeah. what we want and, and and it's detrimental to society to make concessions for people that don't hold that because they're not going to become better employees because they're going to realize they can get away with stuff they're not going to become better humans because we're, how you do anything is how you do everything so the, th the showing up late here showing up late for your kids showing up late for your husband showing up late for the people who depend on you showing up late for the fucking party you know nothing's worse to me than i'm like okay we're going to go and we're going to have dinner at 8 o'clock. And then everybody's like 8.30, they show up, 8.45. It's like, bro, I've been sitting at the table here by right. myself since 7.45 looking like a fucking Lone Ranger. You know, like, guys, why, why can we not get this together? Our friends don't do that. Matter of fact, we showed up the other day. We were the last ones to the dinner. And yeah. we were on time. Everybody was already sitting down eating, you know, and, and literally we were on time. They're like, where have you been? It's like, well, at the ranch, underwater. You know, so no, I had, oh, no, I've been at baseball. I've been at baseball all day. That's what it was. Yeah. You know, where have you been? Two do you think, do you think seven year old baseball games back to back? That's a fuck I've been. <laughs> That's fuck numbing. all y'all. That not is good so move. numbing because they can't even play good ball yet. Dude, man. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Colton, I remember those days. Colton, when he started, couldn't catch or hit. He got a hit and a catch the last game. But here's what I've taught my son with the standard. I do this at home, too. Yeah. Hey, man, you may not know what the hell's going on, but if you see a ball, run to it. When they call you to the dugout, run faster than all your teammates. When it's your turn to get up to the bat, run faster than everybody else on the field. If you'll do those things, we'll figure the rest of the fuck out. I and I'm it. watching my son. He's running to the dugout. He's running to the bat. He's running to the, the ball that maybe... Maybe the other guy's chasing, but he's the backup because you need that at seven years old. And he's out there, and he's yeah. making moves and hustling, and I bring him in the car, and I was like, man, you are terrible at baseball, but I appreciate your hustle. And you're you know, honest with you're going to get better. He and you're, that. Why would I lie to him? I love I'm that. Not That's gonna, so good. Why would I? You've I mean, seen me with my kids. He knows. Why, do I hold yeah. any qualms with my children? Oh, nothing at all. And not they're stand-up stand young men. Yeah. They're more responsible than 99% of the adult population, even at seven years old, yeah, they'll because dominate. I hold that standard with them. Your kids yeah. will dominate the market when it's their time. Yep. In the marketplace, they are going to be savages. We get tornadoes that come through Ardmore the other day, and so our, our creek is overflowing. The whole place is underwater. And I got, it's just me and Colton. It's one of those days that that's just me and one kid. So he'll remember that day for oh, the rest yeah. of his life. That's you so know? rare. Yeah. I throw him on the back of an old muddy four-wheeler, take off running. Asher's four-wheeler. He'd been mudding on it, so it's already dirty. So I throw him on the back of the dirtiest four-wheeler and trudged out there to go through it, right? We get out there. Me and Jimmy are talking about the price of hay and cows and this game plan that we're putting together, you know, timing the market correctly and, and doing some stuff. And Colton goes, he could have been riding the four-wheeler. He could have been sat in there. He put his water boots on and was out there standing in the middle of the flood with the two of us sitting at the fence talking. He'd occasionally spit on the ground just like the two of us. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> he's like, yeah. he just one of us, man. You yeah. know, and he's he wants to know he's what we're talking about. I get on the four-wheeler and he's like, so where are we going to store all that hay? I was like, well, I think Jimmy's going to build us a barn. And he goes, okay, all right, that makes sense. Like, he has questions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, but, uh, but seven. Again, if yeah. I, I, my kids Seven? tomorrow yeah. morning, I'll wake up and they'll already have their clothes on. I'll, I'll wake up. They'll already be downstairs with their clothes on. By the time I get out of the shower, ready to ready go to, to go. wisdom council. And I want to, no, Amy won't have had to wake them up 
Asher will wake himself up and he will go get his little brother up. My 11 year old will wake himself up with his phone alarm. He will go get his seven year old brother up. He w- they will both get dressed and be waiting on Amy to fix their hair and brush their teeth before they walk out of the door. By the time I get out of the shower in the morning and I won't even have to remind them because the standard is set because I want it. How could I tell these people here in the office? Hey, this is Amy and Sean and my standard. And then they see my kids and be like, they have no standards. I was a a gentleman posted on Facebook. He said, I have a seven year old son and I have to take him on a flight. What can I do to keep him? You know, how can I manage that? I'm like, it's seven years old, dude. He should know to sit down and shut the fuck up. That shouldn't even be a problem. Yeah. Seven. He's past the time where there's excuses for him not being able to sit down. Yeah. Yeah, Even on a private jet. Yeah. Like like our kids, like they raid the snack drawer. You know what I'm saying? But like. As soon as they get on the jet, they're opening the snack door, getting their snacks. They sit down and they know dad's got business to handle. We're lucky to be on this jet with dad's business people. And even on family vacation, they go back there and they talk to each other. Well, you involve your kids, man. There's a lot of people that don't involve the children at all uh, with what they're building and what they're a part of. So that's good that you guys are doing that. That's powerful. I don't know how we're going to control the two-year-old, bro. But the other one seemed to get I heard her last night. She was telling us she was having a party. (laughs) Every day. She, what's well, she doing? She's like getting at it, oh, singing, dude. crying, yeah. yelling, all, all of it. All of it. She's all, all yeah. of it. I think the big piece of parenting, and you know, that parallels you know life nowadays with people. They avoid difficult conversations. They d- they avoid stepping up to the plate and like facing reality with somebody. Oh. And and you have to have those conversations with your kids. Like I do that every day. Like I will discipline them, and then I'll have a come to Jesus of look, man. Like. I want to let you have that Oculus. I want to let you play Gorilla Tag and do all that you do. But guess what? That's a privilege. You got to earn it. And if you're treating me like crap, if I have to literally come up there five times to wake you up in the morning, I really don't feel like giving you that privilege. Like you got like this is the real world. You just got to do stuff you don't want to do. There's rewards, but you got to do stuff you don't want to do. I don't want to pay taxes. I don't want to like I want to go do yoga all day and garden in my flower beds. But you know what? I got work I got to do. It's rewarding. I feel good about it. It shows that I have discipline and I feel good on the inside flexing that hustle muscle. But you know what? I got to pay taxes when I make money too. the money's great. But there's the work that goes along with that. And he's sitting there and instead of me just saying wake up in the morning and like, you know, just leaving it at that putting in that extra step to communicate and letting the lesson land is so with parents nowadays, they just avoid that conversation. That's why there's kids on planes that don't sit down because they don't explain, look, dude, this is a federally regulated machine here. If somebody doesn't listen to that lady right there and put their seatbelt on, they can go to jail. So this isn't just as some seats and whatever. This isn't the mall. Like, this is a serious thing. And if you explain that, hey, that grown man 10 times the size of you will go to jail if he doesn't listen to that lady, you better listen to that lady too. I promise that seven-year-old boy is going to sit down and be quiet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But they don't don't think, they don't want to just have that difficult conversation. You know, people shy away from that. I was told for years that no one that that we grow up with, my kids, they don't have to do this stuff at their parents' house. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what you're battling because parents don't hold their kids accountable right. and standards. Oh, I'm but, well aware. Oh, yeah. There's crazy <laughs> what kids are getting away with. Yeah, and I would throw it down, too. Yeah, you and I are a lot alike with that. Different. Absolutely. Yeah. But standards and children. Kid Jack over the, a couple of months ago with, with Colton. Colton's and I'm like, BFF. hey, man, let me, I, I don't know how things happen at your house, but I can already see a trend here. Let me talk to you for a minute. <laughs> yeah. so, yes, let me sir. talk to you for a minute. Yeah, okay. on, like, okay. Now he comes over and he knows the rules. You know what I mean? Same with it's the degree he's kid. You know, hey, I, you know, he's a well-behaved kid. Now he comes over. He's, I don't even know he's there half the time because he, he knows the rules. We go mm-hmm. to the ranch last weekend. Hey, I'm talking to my kids. Hey, or two weekends ago, I'm talking to my kids. Hey, you guys get the shovel, the broom, clean all the mud out of here. I look up. Grayson's the first one to grab the shovel. Right. Yeah. It's like, hey, this it, Mr. Schumann ain't fucking around. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'll that's be good. damned if he's going to call me lazy. You so know? for standard for children, that's one because your kids got it lucky or they're fortunate enough to have you two to instill that mm-hmm. and grow up with Dad, that I never standard. Had. Right. <laughs> But what about the man or woman that's 21, 25, 35? What's it going to take for them to – do they have to go through a forced change to find standards in their lives? What does that look like, you think? Possibly. Because think, think about what happened the other day. So guys late day one, you lock them out. Yep. Day two, what happens? We had a conversation. And it no, just no, wasn't... okay, let me take it back. After the, after the meeting – we br- I bring them in. Oh, your yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, had a I bring very powerful conversation I with said, them. Listen, man, it's not about us being mean to you. It's not about us singling you out. 
It's here. We're going to develop you into the best version of yourself, and the best version of someone's not six minutes late. We have a standard here. We're not trying to emasculate you. We're not trying to, to, to make you look less than a person, but we have a standard here, and we want you to learn these standards of excellence because when you have personal excellence in your life, everything will stem from that, and yep. you'll yes. go a long ways. Then what happened to And it was two? over. That was it. That he was, was it. late. Ryan had a very powerful you know, conversation with him. He was absolutely loving it. I thought it was bought in. And then he calls in the next day. Says he has a headache. I'm like, huh? No, I can't do this. Get, take a fucking my doll and get the fuck to the office, bro. You know, had a headache. And so, you know, one of those things now to now to me, now I, this is what I need to work on. Now I can't look at you. Can't be around you. Can't look like at we you. We just had that powerful just, conversation, and yeah, like, yeah, dude. And Ryan doesn't give a lot of time like that because that not right. you give a lot of time in the meetings and you train, but you don't give a lot of one on one talks like that. That yeah. was super powerful. Absolutely, like I was like, oh yeah, I feel that. Mm. Made me feel <laughs> special. And then to call in, and to call in, dude, you are not my dude. You're not my. I dude, can't right. roll with you. And I can't take you places. Yeah. You don't get to go on private jets. And that's too bad because now you get to go back to your old life where everything's slow and, and you can make excuses. You can be late and they'll allow it. And you can go make, you know, I don't know, 80 grand a year or whatever that might be for him. Um, and I really, it sucks because his life should have been changed forever. Yep. Yeah. He has the words. He had it in the interview. He knows what he needs to be saying to do these big things and how to present himself. But the actions came out and, and flat at, the, at the end of the day, it's like, OK, so it, does he not have the confidence that he can live up to those standards? Does he not believe that he deserves that best version the of the words that he said, man? Whoo, that's a big old fucking lie then. You were yeah. living a big old lie. So, yeah. but life what, goes what, on. Why do you think that is? Like, so a lot of people know what to say, but then their actions don't match their. Because I believe because they've been li- listening to enough Ryan Stuman and Ed Milet and Tony Robbins, they and they get them. Say. They get that shit. They get that part of it. But then when they go to act, and they, they last a week in the gym. You know, they read a book for half a day. They read seven pages and never pick it back up. They never log back into the G Code app. That's that's what happens. That's mm-hmm. what happened to me until I was 39. 39 years old, my life changed dramatically because I was going to lose it, lose it all, and then I had to almost die. Okay, so that was the forced change. And, and but for a year, I had you priming me, but I wasn't doing any. I was listening to you for a year. That's my son. We woke up and listened to Rewire podcast for a year, and I never took action, not once. Didn't get into the gym. I listened to your words because they were sexy. That sounded good, man. That lifestyle sounds amazing. That's what I want to do. But then when I went and tried it for a week, I was like, fuck, this is hard. It's hard. I got to quit drinking. Damn, I got to figure put life out. Life on expert level over exactly. here. Exactly. And I got uh, I to be kinder to my wife and I got to get rid of this addiction that I have. I, there's so many things I have to work on, man. That's a lot. And then finally it came to an, an end where it was the end. Yeah. Standards had to change. All the things that I've been listening to for a year had to go into action. And that was mine was a forced change, you know, lost it all. Like it was forced. There was no other, there was no, Hey, maybe we can go to this back door and see what's over there. And Sean can skate for a little bit. No, no, no. It was over and boom. So I primed listening to your words for a year before I ever did anything. Well, I I, I ever did anything. I'll tell you, it's like, um, I, I, in 2005, I popped in a Tony Robbins DVD that my friend one night was up on meth and, and he bought it and then he gave it to me with the plastic (laughs) still on it a year later. And he's like, you're probably into this shit. It's bullshit. And I was like, okay, I'll listen to it. So I start listening to a CD a day to and from work. You know, it was like 14 CDs. So I got a whole week going back and forth to work, listening to it. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Then I started, I read Think and Grow Rich. Then I read How to Win Friends and Influence People. Meanwhile, I'm still not doing what I'm supposed to do, you know, just like mm-hmm. what you're saying. And, you know, then 2008 comes around and uh, I'm out I'm out of federal prison. And I get a job and top producer at the job. And that came pretty easy to me. It's pretty easy for me to outperform most people, not everyone, but most people, because most people don't have standards and they won't just do the little things. Right. And so I got the, the routine of going to the gym in the morning, showing up at the office before everybody else working later. That's pretty much it. There's no hacks or cheat codes in life, but if you can do those three things, you're pretty much ahead of 99% of the public. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, but at some point in 2015, 2016, I was like, man, 
I have to create a standard. A lot of that's due to Amy here. I have to create a standard. I have to live by it. I have to be better. And it wasn't an overnight change. It's a, a, a fucking seven, eight, nine year evolution of me getting a little bit better every day. Most people think that they can hear something, do something, read a book, learn something, and their life's just going to change instantly. But you can't, man. Old habits don't break. And like people say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. 21 days to start. A yeah. new habit, not to break an old habit or not to create a new habit. It's 21 it's days point. to start. It has taken me fucking 10 years, to, 20 years to create the habit in the gym. 10 in every morning I wake up, the little bitch voice in the back of my head is going, dude, just call Dante, bro. You show up every day. He won't he won't even judge you if you miss the day. Every fucking day. Every day. Every day. Bro. But I do it every anyway. Day. I every do it fucking up. anyway. You yep. know, I go in today, 52 dumbbell squats. Fucking 10 rounds, 300 jump ropes, 100 fucking sit-ups, all within 10 minutes that I got to do this shit, right? That fucking sucks, bro, but I fucking, and I know it's coming when I get there. And I go and do it, right? And I talking myself out the whole way. Man, just turn around, bro. Like, he ain't going to say shit. Just turn around. He's not going to fucking say nothing. And he won't because I have put in the time. Yeah. But that's not the standard that's set. But here's the thing when it comes to the, the talking about it. Like, I have a saying, don't talk about it, be about it. You know, and a lot of people that may translate to make your moves in silence, right? No, no, no. You can tell people what you've done. Don't tell people what you're going to do. I believe mm -hmm. that's a good basis on life. So don't say I'm going to be on time, be on time, and then talk about how you're always on time, mm -hmm. right? Go make a million dollars and talk about how you made a million dollars. Don't tell everybody you're going to make a million dollars because you're getting the dopamine from talking about it. And that's bad dopamine. That's fentanyl. That's bad dope. You want the real dopamine that comes from actually doing it. And so many people right. talk about it, get the dopamine from talking about it. And then the dopamine's so good from talking about it. It's this fake dopamine, this steroid for the mind steroid. And, and so they never get the dopamine from actually doing it, which is the real yeah. stuff. That's like, that's like a one night stand versus married sex. Married sex is way fucking better. Right. But if you don't ever get married, you never get the dopamine from married sex of actually learning about someone. And it's the same thing about talking people. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make a million dollars and they get the dopamine hit from saying that and they feel good about it and yeah. they never really feel like they got to go do it because it feels good to say that shit versus those of us that go do it and don't tell anybody it's not that we didn't tell anybody what we we're going to do I, I knew i was going to go make millions of dollars but i didn't say one day i'm going to make millions of dollars i would say i'm going to keep working my ass off every day just like i did today one day it'll pay off one day it'll fucking pay off. One day I never said I'm gonna go make hundred million dollars, fifty million dollars, blah 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 blah. I'm gonna. This is what I did today. One day it'll pay off. And now I look in the fucking, you know, ten years in the future, it's like son of a bitch, it's paying off. You know. I think it was why the the um the rebrand happened so fast, or the rebuild of this company happened so fast, because yep. we were in so aligned. It wasn't. We didn't have to figure each other out, even though we were strangers. We had the same standard because I'd been listening to you and, and Amy for years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we did what we did so fast. We knew who we were looking for. We knew what needed to be done. We knew the effort that it was going to take, you know, nine to nines. And it was done. That's a standard that was set in, in S play. Same with we the had halls. to figure each other out, how we work mm -hmm. together, and then put a business plan together. And then skill set. Man, we'd still be figuring it out. But And, and then here we are. We're literally fourth what, month. April. So this is four Get months. Fifth. It's been a minute. It's this is the no. this is no April. no wait this is I started here wait. January one. Yeah, his official okay. day was January one, and it's April thirtieth, thirty first, thirtieth today, thirty in April, right? So we're, it's April thirtieth, the last day. So we're exactly four months in, and we just broke a fucking record here. A, a complete. Yeah. And it, those of you that are watching, it's none of your business how much that is, but it's a lot, motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan jumping in, thank you. Um, that was a complete rebuild where every salesperson had never even been in the industry that we're in. Zero. There was None. two OGs that were here, yeah, Taylor two. and Zach. And the rest of them are brand new. From and those dudes up. stepped up their fucking game because they saw these other people coming in. Yep. And they, they're just down for the cause. You know what yeah. I mean? But let's be real. In the beginning, they're like, fuck, are our days number two? They were lost Labradors too. Hey, man, mm -hmm. is my, is he, am I next? They let fucking everybody else go. What do I got to do? Am I next? Is he going to fucking come after me? But as soon as they figured out, oh, no, this dude's loyal as fuck. We're, we're, we're good. You know, we weren't those people. He, he, we're the outliers that got to keep our job. There's three people that got to keep their job here. The, we're the outliers. And those three people, by the way, one of those people's not even a fucking sales guy. And he did six figures this month. Mm -hmm. And that's special. 
Unreal. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Let's just call it what it is. We had to bail the limitless guys out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We had to bail the fucking out, right? And it's a long story, and one day we'll tell it, but we had to bail that fucking event out, and that guy fucking showed up, man. Yeah. You know? And, he did a great and, job. And, that was yeah. very well done. And this That's crazy. he brought in six figures, you know? Yeah. yeah. The outliers, once they realized that, oh, hey, we're outliers, not not just waiting to get replaced. They showed up. Sasser showed up. Fucking Taylor showed up. Taylor just fucking proposed. He's made so much money in the last four months he can finally afford a wedding ring. You proposed <laughs> to his fucking old lady. They're engaged now. <laughs> yeah. He's you on know? his way back now. That's, That's special. Yeah. Absolutely right. special. Yeah. Everybody's uh, new money count is the highest they've ever done. Yep. This month. Yep. That's pretty cool. It's a lot. It's fun uh, watching this grow and scale because we and just can get I warmed just say, up. And you don't even let us run ads, bro. What can, the hell? Can I just say <laughs> in April, when everybody that we do business with just wrote the biggest check of the year, because yep. it's fucking April, yep. right? Or just found out that they're going to write the biggest check of the year, right? Some of them uh, postpone it for a little while with extensions. But uh, me and Sasser were sitting in there yesterday and we were doing the math and he's like, holy shit, Stuman. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty fucking dope, huh? Wow. Like, huh? Congratulations. And he's like, Bro, and we just did this on a random April. We don't really got shit going on this random month. Random like, as hell. That's the fuck I'm yeah. talking about, bro. Yeah. It's not a random April. It's a purposeful fucking month, just like the next month's going to be. It's a standard. It's the, it's the standard it's of Apex. Standard. And by the way, right now. what we build. Right now, they're signing papers on about $94 million worth of real estate. Congratulations. They are. They're, they're signing. Today's the day. Congrats, oh, man. When are you going to talk about that? Fucking yes. finally! <laughs> I've been fucking fighting this shit since November. <laughs> So are you going to talk about that, or do we have to keep that low key? Uh, that's just you talk about a big old night. I mean, people are going to be like ninety-four million dollar real well, estate deal. And again, it's not all my money. There's investors, partners, foremen, contractors, banks. I mean, it's not like. But you, you know, were in this thing I'm since fucking, the ground I've been ground in it one since before they Day fucking one. put a shovel in the dirt. And so yeah. this is my first development deal that that I was involved in from weekly updates from day one uh it, it, you know being a part of the advice being a part of the process and again i'm not the manager of the project i'm a part of the investor pool but mm -hmm. i am a hands-on type of person i want to know yeah. what's going on i want to and and so now i'm parlaying that money into a four million dollar deal that i bought from 1.3 that will be developing myself this time because of what i learned through this that's that's me it's like let me th this is so many people they want to be the guy Right. But but I can be the guy behind the guy until I figure the shit out and Hell then I'll go idea. try it myself. You know what I mean? And so I was the guy behind the guy and one of the guys that put in I put a substantial amount of money into this. So it isn't like, oh, I put in twenty grand and I'm a part of this shit. It was a lot of fucking money. And 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 a lot of patience. And and so now I know all the steps that need to be taken, how to deal with the city, how to get the, the rights, how to fucking survey yeah. shit off. So now we've got a one point three deal that we're picking up at the end of July. That, that I've got under contract. I'm just going through due diligence and stuff. And I'll end up flipping it for three and a half, four and a half million dollars by the time I'm done, depending on what my roads are going to look like and where I move the pond around and stuff on this particular property. And then here in two weeks, I've got another $2.2 million that, that I'm closing on that's just me that, that, that you know, oh, hopefully, so excited hopefully time. they'll let me tear the house down. <laughs> and because uh, I want to do that. I want to drive a – I want – Monaco to come record me driving a D8 <laughs> dozer through this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, and, what house? And uh, the one in Salina. Yeah. Going so, down? Uh, yeah. Today, I just got a contract on a $415,000 piece of property. So, bro, like, like you know, th the other day somebody... He doesn't even tell me these things, Sean. I'm just the, like, oh, did we? The, the, oh, it's delightful. The other day okay. somebody... You guys don't oh, pop bottles and, by the and way, celebrate? This, by the way, oh, this, yeah. dude we'll likes to celebrate. Eventually talk about the, it. The, the other day... <laughs> The other he day, does shit. somebody <laughs> made a post about me saying this dude pretends like he has all this stuff going on so people will pay him. But really, he's a fraud. And I thought, man, you really don't understand. No, you know what I'm yeah. saying? First yeah. of all, I tell the public a fucking fraction of what I've got you going on. You have no on. idea. There's and, so and, much going on. And this is my wife. She has no reason to lie on my behalf. And, and, she wouldn't. And just like sitting in that, right. that meeting yesterday. You asked me to, I'd be like, What did Amy no. say? And you pour all your money into this shit. You know what I mean? Like, And that was her exact words. And I know because yeah. I run the finances. And you pour all your money from other projects into this shit every yeah. fucking year. And, and if there weren't no other projects, how the fuck would I be able to do that? But yeah. people don't understand what it's like. Dude, 
with this house in Salina, I made $200,000, okay? It's not a whole fucking bunch of money, but it's more money than the average American makes in a fucking year, and I did it from November 15th to May 15th, which is six fucking months. That's pretty goddamn impressive. Two hundred grand yeah. part time in my fucking extra time on a piece of property. I also get the bragging rights to say I own the largest residential lot in Collin County available right now. And I flipped it. I fucking flipped it. That's a yeah. fucking, that's a big fucking that's deal. It's a big lot. It's Huge. pretty. I also have on one it. of the largest projects in Collin County, which is the $94 million deal that we're closing on today. I was a fucking part of that. That's I'm Collin? Making, I'm making fucking history in the fucking Damn. richest county in Texas. I also own a building in the fucking richest zip code. These people have no fucking idea. They have no fuck Idea. That's why I have to get you to never pay attention to them ever I again. I, I'm just saying it's, ever. it's just something. But, but you that, can't DM them back. But but these are people. <laughs> these are people yeah. without standards who don't know what real business looks like. Yeah. So they assume since they're full of shit that I'm full of shit. But I'm actually doing stuff right now. Mm-hmm. Do I lose sometimes? Yeah, we lost. Thanks to motherfuckers, we lost 93 fucking restaurant stores or some shit that these other guys that were bad operators shut down. So I don't always win either. But I know this. When I bet on me, I had lost. And when I bet on me, I'm always going to make at least one fucking dollar. Because that's a different standard. Because I have that fucking standard, right? Standing on business. And by the way, I did all of this. All of this was done without me begging the internet to invest in my deals. Right. Without me fucking raising money. money. Without me fucking going, some of it I didn't even borrow from fucking banks. Like, this is without me having to fucking tell the public oh, I'm raising money for, for this project. If you guys want to put in, here's a fucking, comp- uh, 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 what do you call those notes? Uh, uh, fuck. Anyway, so it's like. It's a fuck note. Starts with a, a C. <laughs> what is it? It's something. Promissory note starts with a P. Here's a processor say commissary. For some reason, I can't say commissary. There we go. Like, it's not a promissory <laughs> note. I didn't have to borrow money from the public. I didn't go raise money from Apex. I've never fucking it's raised money from note. Apex. You know, one time That's we all one. pulled our money into NFTs, and that shit went to shit. But you know what? It was a fucking pet project anyway. I still have them if anybody fucking wants them. You want to buy them, I'll sell them to you. But anyway, like... like do you enjoy doing that stuff, um, group deals, like with people of Apex? Or you're just going to go do your own thing? No, Unless- man, because here's the thing. Here's the, here's the thing, and it's not just apex it's any group of any people if if something goes wrong then people tend to blame me right yeah and so yeah. i don't want the responsibility stupid. of losing your money me and you we can go do deals because if it goes wrong you'd be like ah, oh, we fucked up right but like here's the thing we had a guy a couple years ago and he sold these bullshit fucking uh uh they were like websites that generate leads and they make money off the leads he called it digital real estate right and uh, it didn't pay anywhere near what what he said it was going to pay, right? It pays, okay? It pays, but I should be making about $20,000 a month at this point and I'm making about $900, okay? So it's nowhere near what he promised, but it's paying, okay? I put in one hundred and twenty grand into this deal, and I'm like, you you know, it's like 2 Chain says, you know, his car got stole from Benny Hanna. You win some, you lose some. You know what I mean? And he went and bought another car on Tuesday, right? And so yeah. that's me. It's like, okay, cool. It, it ain't paying the 20 grand. It's paying 900. I guess 900 is better than nothing. At some point, fucking it, 20 years in the future, I'll get my security. money back, right? Mm-hmm. The people that spent yes, $2,500... And invested twenty five hundred dollars, and I didn't raise money or make any money from this. But the people that spent twenty five hundred dollars, you'd have thought that dude stole a goddamn million bucks from him. You oh fucking that guy's such a fucking thief. He's for a fucking piece of shit. It's like, bro, you're out twenty five hundred bucks. Be thankful you're not out one hundred twenty grand like I am. Yeah, but you don't hear me bitching on the internet about it, right? Right? It's like it, it should happen. You know what? I, I fucking maybe should have done more due diligence. Let where is the lesson I can extract from this bad investment? Same with the restaurants, right? Where's the lesson next time? Fucking understand that when they say that they can do some shit, that actually means they're going to do that shit. I assume just because they said they can do that, that's got to be a rare situation. They would never do. Oh fuck, they're going to do it every month. Jesus fucking Christ! What yeah. kind of a greedy bastard is this guy? Right? Yeah. And so. You know, but again, I I, I said this yesterday to the executives. I ran a $5,000 event, three-day event, per ticket, $5,000, and a $25,000 mastermind from 2013 to 2017, okay? That's all I charged until 2017. But in 2016, I wrote my first book. And so I decided to follow Russell Brunson. I was working with him at the time, and he helped me set up a funnel. And I sold these books free plus shipping. Mind you, I had 100, maybe 200 clients at this point from 2013 to 2016. All of them have paid a minimum of five grand. 
hundred percent satisfaction. Everybody's happy as hell. Most of them paid twenty five grand. These cocksuckers that bought a nine dollar free plus shipping book. My book didn't arrive. This guy's a fucking scam. He's a fucking thief. What a piece of shit. I'm like, bro, it takes me two weeks to get the book to you. It's written on the website. Okay, I'm not Amazon. I can't just print them. If you want me to sign them, it's going to take me a minute to get there. What a fucking scam. I paid for my book three days ago. It's not even at my house. I had to shut the fucking book funnel down because I'd never been called a scammer in my life. And these motherfuckers that spent $10 with me were calling me scammers. But the people that spent five and 25 grand were calling me a fucking hero. I'm like, make it make sense, bro. Even if yeah. I did fuck you out of $10, even if I fucking did fuck you out of $10, do you think that's going to change my life? Do you think your $10 is why I have a Lamborghini? <laughs> I think, got your $10. Do you think I, your $10 is why I live in the house I live in? Do you think your $10 really made that big of a difference to me? Or it was yeah. me doing you a fucking favor trying to give you some information I up, that man. I spent that's two hilarious. fucking so years true. writing this book to give you for only $10 what these people paid twenty five grand for? If anybody needs to be saying scam, it's the motherfuckers that spent 25 grand with me that everything they learns in a book that you got for $10, but they're not, they're happy. And so it's the same thing. The people that have the lower amount of investment, the less skin in the game are the ones that bitch the loudest. I know guys that lost millions of dollars in the restaurant business and they're like, you win some, game. you lose. And th look, this wasn't our fault. These were outside operators, right? He took our money from NFTs and bought a ranch. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I still have those NFTs. They, and I put in more money than anybody in that group. Yeah. It's, a, you know? it's all it has to do with the standard. One of the things that you uh, spoke on about By the way, that was two ago. different years. NFTs were 21. The ranch was at the end of That was just a different time. Everybody was yeah. printing money. What happened is. <laughs> 21 and 22. Right? Yeah. In 21 and 22, <laughs> everybody made money. And but no one looked in the mirror in 2023 and realized I ain't that good. Yep, I'm not. Money that is good. responsibility, and yeah. I'm irresponsible. That's yeah. what they should have told themselves. Yeah. There was a and guy then, yesterday on Twitter, and I, I read his post. I don't know who he is. He was just in my you know recommended post, and he said, you know, not a day goes by that I don't think about this and regret it. Eight years ago, I had a business partner steal 200 grand from me, and I just can't seem to get over it. And I went eight fucking years ago. Eight fucking, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, bro, you're focusing and thinking about that every day. I only think about the restaurants because I got a fucking email the other day that they shut down the fucking final one of them, right? Like, yeah. I don't think about that shit. Me and Amy, we wrote that shit off. There was a year in 2021 that I wrote a $700,000 check to make some other investors fucking oh, whole yeah. out of my own pocket, bro. Out of my, I don't think about that. I hadn't thought about that in fucking two months till I just mentioned it now. I don't yeah. fucking focus on that shit because it's part of business. What did I learn? I learned how to sue this lawyer that's going to pay me this 700 grand back at some fucking point in the future because we're going through federal court to get it. Yeah. And I learned that I ain't lost a fucking court case that I've been to right. because I do the right thing. What did I learn? I learned that, you know what? And, 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 and I learned that, okay, that, that was a bad deal. What did I learn from it? Not to do deals of that nature anymore. Not to fucking, not to, not to get two or three of my buddies involved where I have to keep my word and make them right when someone didn't expect to keep their word with me. The internet doesn't talk about that shit. But if I focused on that for the last five years when we have broke a record this month. Yeah, wouldn't no, be here. You never even fucking heard that story probably. No. Hell no, I've never heard that story. Because it, it's irrelevant, yeah. bro, because that lesson is what's got us to where we're at today. Yeah. Do you think that's why you're pulling away from influencer and focus on this in, uh, industry leader brand yes. is because you chased that for a bit, right? You were going into that. Yeah. You wanted that. And then now all of a sudden you had it, you got it, you dominated it. And now you're at industry leader branding that going after it hard. Do you think that's a standard that you're setting for yourself to setting walk away from them industry? Just like I have on everything else. Mm -hmm. I set the standard for the industry. You know, the haters get mad when I say that the copycats get intimidated when I say that, but I set the standard for the industry. You'll watch. They'll copy us next year. Just like they're copying us this year with the other fucking events. Right. Absolutely. There was a guy out of Florida. I won't say his name, but he threw an event with our lineup from 2022. 400 people showed up to his event because it ain't about those fucking people. It's about us and the difference that we've made in yep. the fucking community and the standard that we have and those people that are okay, out hold there on real quick go back into that people don't understand how you're able to draw a crowd and i don't uh, they need to understand because you're not going to get the badass lineup it's proven and put up ten thousand people it's not going to happen because it just four hundred bombed right but how do you put up 400 or how do you get packed stadiums so this is this is important what do you, what do you call it what, so, from so what this is important so 
the guys out there, and I want to put this in perspective with the bigger picture here. Yes. The guys out there that talk shit on me. There's a few of them, not a lot, but the guys out there that talk shit. People will watch a train wreck and they'll be like, ha ha, he's talking shit about Stuman, but they won't pay for that. Right. And there's no amount of hate that you can give to me that will make you a better business person. There's no amount of hate and jealousy and shit that you can spew on me that'll attract good, positive people. If you neg- if you only charge one side of the battery and it's the negative side, the positive side will not work. Yep. If you only charge the positive side of the battery, the negative side will fucking work because that's how batteries work. I just made that up. I don't know if it's true or not. But <laughs> it sounded good though, didn't it? Right? But if I lie, I'm going to lie. If I lie, I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? But... But, that was good, dude. That was good. All we need is the ground. That's the thing you would tell her. All we need is the ground. That's right. That's good. But but here's here's the thing. Yeah, you do. So the people think, oh, if I talk enough <laughs> shit about whoever it is, maybe it's not even me, then then I'll attract those people. But then they wonder why the other they attract more shit talkers. How do I know this? Because that's how I used to roll. Yeah. One day I hit my wife up in 2017. I said, how do I have all these fucking negative people around me? She goes, look at the post you're making. You're talking shit about politics. You're talking shit about religion. You're talking shit about negative other people. You're negatives. calling people out. And I stopped. I don't call people out. I don't do it. Right? I had my ass fucking called out a million times last week, and I never made one fucking post about it. Mm-hmm. Right? I've had my ass called out for two years by the same little five losers, and I never made a fucking post about them. Right? Because it's not because that's not who I want to attract, and Good I don't want to appease lives. them by giving them attention. So Good my old. wife tells I'm me saturated this. Saturated by that. Talking about the same person for five years, dude. Two years, one year, six fucking growth. months, man. And so, 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 but but here, out, my wife says. So when you come to MDM, we're not going to talk politics. We're not going to talk religion. We got something because. Because you know what? Republicans want to get better. Democrats want to get better. You know, men want to get better. Women want to get better. African-Americans want to get better. Hispanics want to get better. White people want to get better. We're there to help whoever wants to get better, get better. It's That's the bottom line. And so I don't mm-hmm. want to say anything that, that – and it's not that I don't have beliefs. It's just that if I go out and I say I'm pro-Trump or pro-Biden or whatever, the, is that is – that, is that, is that, first of all, it got nothing to do with business. And second of all, is right. that good, me having those conversations, is that going to attract good quality people? Because I see a lot of people that are having those conversations and, and it's just a bunch of angry, they're just other angry people too. And I don't want that, man. I try to be this positive light for the world. Now, how does that translate to me bringing people in? Because you know what? There's a bunch of people. Now, let's say that I've had 86,000, no, I'm sorry, 82,000 people buy my products in 13 years. That's a fact, okay? I can prove it. You've seen it. We have it in the system. 82,000 buyers that have bought my shit. Yeah. Let's say 200 of them are upset because they didn't have the standard or we had to let them go because they didn't keep their word. That's still yeah. a 99.9% yeah. success rate. It's funny so that, that means that, that with 82,000 people that have bought my shit, it's fairly easy to get two, 3,000 people in a room because mm-hmm. I'm still only 5, 6% of the, maybe even, t- I'm less than 10%, so I'm 5 or 6% of the people that have bought from me that are satisfied. And so how do you create 80? 1,000, let's say 1,000 people are upset, which is just crazy. But how do you create 81,000 happy customers? You deliver what you say to them. You never promise anything. We don't promise people are going to get rich. The people who thought they were going to get rich and came in and didn't do the work, they might be a little upset, but I never told them they were going to get rich. I never, sh- I, you know what, the people who don't like me, it's because I had to have a real conversation with them and say, hey man, this is not the standard we set in Apex. This is not the standard we set in the tribe. This is not the core values that we operate yeah. by. Yeah. There's people out there going, that guy wouldn't know integrity if it hit him in the face. It's like it hits me in the face daily, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Writing a $700,000 check time. to keep my word to people, that's yeah. fucking integrity. You wouldn't mm-hmm. write, the, these motherfuckers wouldn't write a seven thousand dollar check to save their fucking reputation i've written i know my reputation's worth at least seven hundred thousand dollars because i've fucking done it right these people won't write a seven hundred dollar check to save their reputation because their reputation ain't worth 700 bucks so for 13 years i've kept it real and some people don't like it and some people do but i've kept it fucking real but enough people like the fact that i've kept it real to where they keep showing up and going you know what stewman he ain't perfect because I never claim to be perfect, but he's going to keep it real and he's going to have real motherfuckers on his stage. Now, you said I went through a phase where the influencer, Sean, I'll be honest with you. In 2019, uh, we threw an event 30 days. We had a thousand people there and it was the coolest thing ever. I'd never done nothing like that. Didn't even believe I could do it and we pulled it off. Okay. And we had all these, it was the first time we had all these influencers there. And so in my mind, I'm like, that's how you fill a room. I wasn't anybody at this point in time. I was just a hustle muscle hitting the phone, hitting social media. And I'm like, okay, so this is how you fill a room. So 2020 comes around. 
And this is a great story for, for people to, about business. 2020 comes around. We paid 90 grand to have a three-day event in a hotel, and we're going to have 1,000 people there. Okay, I know I'd done it in 19, so I knew I could do it in 2020. The event's in April. Come March, I get a call from the hotel. State of Texas is shut down. We're, uh, we're going to send your 90 grand back, thank God. But you can't have your event here. Yeah. I'd already sold a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of tickets at this point. So I got a download from God. Uh, you can do one of two things, Ryan. You can refund these people and you, you kind of need the money. I always need money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always need anytime you don't think I need money, I need money. And, <laughs> and or you can call them back <laughs> and funny. say, hey, you spent $500 on a ticket. I'll give you $5,000 in store credit to buy whatever digital products you want. Or I'll give you your 500 bucks back. Nobody took the 500 bucks back because that's a stupid bet. So, and yeah. it doesn't cost me anything but a login and an email to the yeah. digital products. So, some people were like, well, what if I give you another 500? Could I have 10,000? Yeah, fuck, I don't know. So, I sold a whole bunch of fucking more money. Or people might have spent $200 on a ticket and Apex was five grand. And they're like, well, how about I just take 2,000 credit and then give you another three grand to be in Apex? Fucking done, right? So, we end up making a shitload Smash of money. It. Then, God gave me another download. Hey, why don't you just throw the event for free anyway? Where am I going to throw it at? YouTube. So I call up. Go Tony YouTube. Robbins is building a, mm -hmm. th this is, th this I find out later, but it was just perfect divine timing. Okay. April, the, everybody's already watched the Tiger King. Okay. And there's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing new coming out on Netflix because nobody can go make movies. Great okay. Movie. So people are bored as shit. Movie. Tony Robbins is spending $16 million of Salesforce's money to go build his place. Eric Worre's spending $8 million, $16 million. Eric Worre's spending $8 million of Network Marketing Pro's money to go build his place. I'm smart, dude. I'm a tech guy. So I call all those speakers up and I said, hey, yo, I need you to make me a 45-minute video and put it in Dropbox and send it to me. We're going to run this bitch live on YouTube. What? Just send me the video. Okay, whatever. I sat in my office. Amy was there. I sat in my office drinking margaritas all day, pushing play on open broadcaster. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'd be like, and I had all these buffers made. Oh, so I would shit. push play on the buffer and go, and up next in California, it's Heath Evans, ex NFL player, Super Bowl champion, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> push play on it and stream live as if we were there on the spot, just like New the news does it. 32,000 people watched that because they didn't have shit else to do and nobody else was fucking broadcasting. Zoom didn't exist the way it is now. Yeah. Nobody knew about this shit. I was ahead of the game. I'm a trendsetter. Then the fucking influencer market's like, Stuman's the fucking guy. He figured it all out before us. So I remember thinking, God, I made it. I made it. 32,000 people watching me. They want me on stages everywhere. And so I'm on stages every fucking other week. Private. I ain't taking a private. I ain't been on a commercial airline since July of 2020. And I left Andy Frisella's Summer Smash. I left his house after Summer Smash. And I flew private home because I sat on a commercial airline and they pissed me off because they pulled away from the gate. And they said, we're going to sit here for two hours while I wait for the pilot. And I said, no, you're not. You're going to pull it forward, and I'm going to go get a Learjet next door. You guys get the fuck out of here. I'll beat you home. They're <laughs> like, if you step off of this jet, you're never going to be able to fly again with us. And I was like, fuck you guys Peace. anyway. I'm fucking <laughs> out. I flew home by myself. Oh, there was one yeah. other person that got off from Nigeria, and I asked her if she wanted to fly with me, but she was scared. You know, it was kind of the Epstein times and shit. So she didn't <laughs> want to go with me. But I would have flown with – she could have flown for free if she wanted to, you know, because she was trying to get home to her, her family in Dallas. And, and she was trying to get to Dallas so she could fly back to Nigeria, be with their family. Their St. Louis didn't have an international hub yeah. like that. So anyway, fly home in a Learjet. And, dude, I'm on the road every two weeks, man. I'm selling out jets. We're selling out fucking stadiums, all these fucking people everywhere, every event that we go to. I'm the headline guy. And I even spoke in Andy and Ed's first event. Like, all these things are fucking going on. And, you know, as I start paying attention, I'm like, I start getting scared, to be honest with you. I was like, man, these these people, and I won't name names, but it's all of them, uh, these, these people don't carry themselves to the standard. Yeah. They don't have the same core values I have. They would hit me up. They'd say, hey, Stu, man, we're going out drinking tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> With the fucking sniffles and shit. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm, I, I, I got to work out in the morning. It's 10 o'clock. We're done with the event. Nothing happens. I'm married man. There's nothing happens good after 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I start saying no to people and they start judging me. Yep. It's cool. Yeah. I can deal with it. And they tolerated me. 
right? I realized I wasn't I wasn't invited. I was tolerated because they needed me to sell tickets and they needed they needed my presence on their stages because I had a lot of momentum going. But I realized that I didn't fit in with them. And on one hand, honestly, I'm I'm a human. The shit hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? It's like I'm I'm showing you guys what's possible if you do the right thing. But they didn't want to, and I watch no. them. I watch them step out on their wives, and I didn't watch them because I'm not watching two people fuck. But you get the point. Like I, I, I know that Thank they stepped the out on their wives. Yeah. Appreciate that. I know that they were doing drugs. Like, and look, I smoked weed, but I didn't really consider that a drug. You know, I still don't. I don't smoke weed, but, but I, I'm not gonna go do blow with you. I remember I was at this one event, and this guy showed up with like a fucking half a key of coke. And he's like, yo, you want some? And I know this guy pretty well. And I'm like, bro, you know I don't fucking get down like that. And he's a billionaire, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And then I start watching these TV celebrities go in and out of the bathroom all night with this guy. And I'm like, fuck them too? Yeah. Fuck, man. Y'all don't have no fucking self-control. Amy calls it the Scottsdale diet. I'm like, y'all don't have no, <laughs> y'all don't have no self-control. Not you know wrong. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, we're, we're, over, we're over here getting money, <laughs> building marriages, having kids, fucking building empires. Do you know what happens if your wife finds out that you did blow and went upstairs with her? She's going to take half of everything you work for in your life, bro. What That's a doing? fucking terrible decision. Then they start judging me even more. Yep. So 2023 comes around. I just cut them the fuck off. I'm not going to these events. I did it for two years. I'm not going to events anymore. I'm not fucking, I'm not, I'm not, unless they pay me 50 grand and jet fuel and shit, I'm not going. So I set this in crazy price that some people still even fucking paid. Some people still do pay. And, and I'm not going to go fucking have these people on my stage. I'm not going to put them up anymore. Right. And, and it wasn't all of them. Some people, I remember Wes Watson one time, we were at a party and I'm like, Hey, where are you going? He goes, bro, my life ain't fake. I'm going to bed. It's eight 30. I got to be up at two 30 in the fucking morning. And I'm like, all right, My you know, dog. not everybody likes Wes. <laughs> and look, I don't agree with everything he does, but I watch that guy fucking live his standards in front of me. You yep. know what I'm saying? Right. He's not the friendliest Absolutely. fucking box of kittens on the planet, but I watched him have a fucking standard. Mm -hmm. He's he's the only fucking one that I can distinctly remember that stuck to its fucking standards, right? And again, he's not everybody's cup of tea, and I don't think he gives a fuck if you drink tea or not. But <laughs> but I watched that guy be who the fuck he said he was. Then I learned in 2023, tw later in 2022, I was like, man, I got to fucking have an insurance policy. These people are going to start fucking thinking. If, you hang if I hang around a bunch of drug dealers and I don't sell drugs, eventually they're going to be like he's involved with them somewhere. If I hang out with the cartel and I'm not cartel, eventually they're going to be like he's running drugs somewhere or he wouldn't be fucking associated with those people all the time. Right. And I watch these guys raise money and not pay their fucking investors. I watch these guys shut down restaurants. I watch these guys shut down chicken farms. I watch them shut down pizza fucking factories. I watch them never fucking keep their word. And I said, I got to keep my distance. Then guess what? A lot of people went, well, Stuman must not be that cool after all because he's not in the cool kids club. But I'd rather have a fucking standard than be in any cool kids club. I'd rather hang around a bunch of fucking nerds with standards than a bunch of cool people with no fucking standards. Yeah. And I made that decision and stood for it. And we're just now, a year later, People starting to go, hmm, maybe old Stuman was ahead of the times again. Yeah, you cat William maybe, of the industry. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe old Stuman, maybe, maybe they didn't cut him off. Maybe he just quietly, because I don't talk mm -hmm. shit about people. No. Maybe he just quietly exited from all that shit because it wasn't for him. Yeah. You know, listen, if I get a movie contract, which I've had one, by the way. Yeah. I mean, my life's pretty fucking cool. And I had a movie contract. If I get a movie contract and I get invited to parties at Diddy's house, I'm not fucking going. Mm -hmm. I'm not right. going. Nothing against P. Diddy. He can go have sex with whoever the fuck he wants. You have legitimate shit. businesses and shit to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I got, I, yeah. I, I, it ain't about money to lose or businesses to lose. It's about a wife to lose. It's about kids to That's fucking tough. disappoint and That's, let down. It's business. about a God I believe in that I want to get into heaven at some point and I want to be able to say I've done the right thing about by him. It's not about what man thinks about me. I could give a fuck what. Now, does it bother me when people say stuff? Yes, because it's lies. Because they don't know the whole story because I never came out and told the whole fucking story because I'm not going to sit here and name names. But there's somebody, somebody paid to have Baller Buster's fucking page taken down because they knew the questions they were going to ask me and they didn't expect me to fucking show up with receipts to have those answers. And it wasn't me that took them down. Somebody yeah. very important, and I know who the fuck it was, yeah. paid to take that fucking page down so that uh -huh. I didn't tell the fucking story that I just told you but with real names in that motherfucker because if yeah. they'd have asked me, I'd have had to tell them. Yep. Yep. And, it's and the, the same fact that you that have all that all that documentations, <laughs> no one has that.
Dude, no one has that. I have yeah. the text from them at the end of it going, that's why we didn't bust you. Holy shit, you have fucking receipts for everything. Mm-hmm. I, they said, I didn't pay my contractor. Here's cash checks. They say this guy didn't fucking blah, blah, blah. Well, here's his fucking back office and his fucking yeah, website. Yeah, they never they, dealt with anybody like ev- you before. They never fucking dealt with nobody like me because they didn't really, and it's not Baller Buster's fault. It's not. They're like CNN or Fox News. They just report what's been given to them. Yeah. Right? What they didn't realize is there's a fucking bunch of fucking liars that are fucking pissed off that I have standards and they have none that fed them a bunch of bullshit that I had real fucking answers to. And then it became somebody else way above the people that sent that. The the people that shut that page down weren't the people that sent that. They were the people that those people sent that about me that actually did it. And those people that sent it know those people did it too. They were just too big of a fucking cowards to A, say it to my face or to say it to those people's face, but the guys at the top, we'll call it the top, the guys at the top of the pyramid and the Ponzi scheme went, fuck, if he names us, the feds are going to fucking come. If he names yep. us, the world's going to know we're pieces of shit, and Stuman's just that motherfucker to do it. Yep. Well, because you can do it. You don't have no dirt on you. you got no dirt on me. It's like, I'm a real you know? boy. Look, there, there's dirt on me. There's dirt on me. Let me explain. <laughs> Thanks One of the that, things Sean. that Baller Buster that was said <laughs> was there was somebody, and I know who, because here's the thing. I know who sent all that shit into him because yeah. I know how people talk. The yeah. guy's like him and the king, blah, blah, blah. I know who that was. The guy yeah. that said him and the NFTs, I know who that the guy king was. The king and the prophet. Him, he, he bought a fucking ranch. I know who that fuck. I can tell how the fuck you talk who you are because I'm an excellent communicator and I fucking text all these people. And at some point, I have messages from every one of those people telling me I was their hero <laughs> until I had to get real with them. But there was one person that used to work here and goes, I left because he got drunk and cussed out his social media manager and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, yeah, I fucking posted about that on, so, on Facebook literally a week after it happened a year and a half ago. I own that. Yeah. I own it because... I already told everybody that I already I told that. everybody that. You're bringing up old <laughs> shit that I already addressed and said I was sorry for. I brought that young man in and sat him down and told him I made a mistake, that I went a little too heavy. And the point was, the point was made, I just took it a little too far, right? And then I went on Facebook and apologized to him and even tagged his ass and told the public that I made a mistake. Then I didn't drink for seven fucking months. So what the fuck have you done to get better when you have to learn a hard lesson? Mm -hmm. You quit a job? Good for you. Because I guarantee the one you got right now ain't worth a fuck and ain't paying near as good as this one. Mm -hmm. I fucking promise that. That's why your butt hurt. Because listen, I I work with Patrick (laughs) Bet David. I'm in his little mastermind thing. I say little because it's just like eight of us. I'm in his mastermind thing. If I join Patrick Bet David's mastermind and Patrick told me he's had to fire thousands of employees over the years. They have 40,000 people in PHP right now. They've had to fire thousands of people. He says he fires most people within 30 days. He knows almost immediately, right? So if I go and I'm in there and all of a sudden somebody messages me and goes, Patrick's not this nice guy you think. He fired me. He fucking didn't pay us a severance. You know what I'm going to go? I'm not going to go, oh, really? Tell me more. I'm going to go, bro, you're probably fucking loser. You got fired. I'm over here with the winners. Mind your business. Yeah. Most people can't do that because they're addicted to drama and they're addicted to fucking being crabs in the bucket. And they go, really? I thought he was a good dude. Tell me more. And they want to know dirt. When you came to work here from your, your previous employer, what's the first thing I told you? I don't give a fuck what that dude does. And I don't need to know about that guy. I don't fucking care. I don't know. I don't need to know anything about his personal life or none of that shit because we're here to focus on what the fuck we're doing. That's the past. Yeah, we're winning. Yeah. yeah. Thinking on the future. Yep. That's how it works. It worked. Uh, she finally threw <laughs> it in. It's about time, man. I popped the cherry. It. You're welcome. That's it. We're out. <laughs> that was a great episode. But that's what it's about. That's how we win. That's why we're winning. That's why we're winning. We ain't focused on anything other than so, us as a family and a team winning. So to go back to the guy, this guy for eight years has been focused on 200 grand. And, and the reason why he's oh, yeah, focused on, and the reason why he's still focused on the the 200 grand for eight <laughs> years is because he hasn't got past that to focus on the two million that's coming. I that's understand for him, if yeah. I lost 700 grand, if I lo- I lost a million dollars between those restaurants, the pizza plates, the fucking card shop, all these fucking pla- I lost a million fucking dollars and then 700 grand more. OK, so that's one point seven million dollars minimum that I've lost. Do I focus on that? No, because that my wife told me this one day on the way home from church. I said, babe. I lost almost $2 million of our hard-earned, after-tax, saved fucking money because I trusted fucking people that were pieces of shit. And this is what my wife said. She said, if you're ever going to be a billionaire, you need to learn these lessons as a millionaire. Bam. That's powerful. 
That's pretty damn good right there, man. You're welcome. Yep. Happening so now. So what am I going to focus on? The billions possibly in the future? I may not hit a billion. I'm not sitting here going, I'm going to hit a billion. We'll but, hit a billion. But am I going to am I going to focus on that billion in the future? Yeah. We'll or am I going to focus on that two million lesson that I learned that will better to learn? Actually, what she said was better to learn a lesson when you're worth 10 million or so and you lost two million. This mm -hmm. is years ago when you're worth 10 million, you lost two million yeah. versus you being worth hundreds of million and losing tens of millions. Because I do have a friend that lost 19 million dollars to the same people that took two million from me. Yep. Damn. Because he's a billionaire and he learned the lesson in a way harder fucking lesson than I did. Right, because mm -hmm. because even when you're worth the billions, you're like, dude, fucking, I lost almost twenty million dollars of these pieces of shit. I don't give a fuck how rich I mm -hmm. am. That's like fucking hitman money mm -hmm. versus me. And I'm like, you know what? Hit you won't man. be able to get twenty million from hit me because I'll never invest with anybody ever Close. again. So I had my banker do? call me yesterday. He goes, guy's flipping two helicopters. He needs three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is like, bro, I'd only nope. only invest in me. Not he goes, it's a it. solid deal. He owns the bank. The bank already gave him three hundred fifty grand. Then yeah, I don't know no shit. Then why you. aren't they giving him? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm like, I, I understand Crazy. what you're saying, and thank you for thinking of me. But I don't, unless I can own it, control it, touch it, smell it, feel it, and fucking run it myself, I ain't fucking with it. The reason why me and Jimmy do deals together is because I can drive out there, touch that land, and I'm in control of all the finances and all the contracts. He goes yep. and shows it to P. He finds it, he runs it by me. I get to say if I'm in control, if we buy it or not. He goes and shows the people. I run the contract. I know what the fucking split on the numbers are. I'm in control of the situation. That's the only reason I have one partner that does that shit with me because I'm in control. And it, because why? When I'm in control, I can make sure that 100% of the time the standards met and the fucking integrity is kept in the deal. If yeah. I'm not in control of it, I can't guarantee those two things. That makes it a bad investment for me. Yeah, you're eliminating all the gray area. That's pr it's absolutely perfect. Yep. So what, where do you go from here with your investments then? Are you just going to stick to land? Big land deals? No. Uh, That's going to be a sleeve. No. Sleeve? So, so it works like this. I started off flipping houses, making 2500 bucks on assignments, 2005. Then 2010, 11, I start buying and, and rehabbing and selling houses, making 25, 30, 50 grand sometimes on homes. Then I get to flipping land, making a couple hundred thousand dollars per deal on land, 20, 2023, 2022, right? Now I'm doing my first development deal where we're splitting it up and we're going to make million dollars. Okay. Like I'm going to make seven. This will be my first seven figure deal in profit that I've, I've done myself with no, no other bullshit. Right. So at some point I'm going to be able to go from a $4 million development to a $10 million development to a fit. See, cause here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to deal with renters. That's why I'm selling all my single family houses. I'm about to dump one in Florida too. Dump is not the word. Cause I, I, I probably from, have one for you in small elm or little elm. And, and, and I sold it. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Oh, I, got we sold it? I got the contract today. So hey! It closes hey! May 31st. Hey, little elm. Hey. Gone. It closes May 31st. So it's a nice little town. Heck so yeah. little elm. I, uh, I got sold it to Charmers lady. Rachel. Oh yeah. It feels like a oh, uh, city. I, out of, like I sold it to the lady that works the front desk at Dr. Chalmers. Office. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, she's great. She's yeah. bugging the hell out of me to get yeah, my sleep so, test done. So, <laughs> uh, have you done it yet? I'm like I've been out of town. She's the ring can travel. And so, <laughs> at some point, at some She's point, great. I will do ten million dollar development deals. But I'll never have a renter. I'll never have a tenant. I'll like the apartment complex we did. We weren't renting and managing property. We yeah. built it, built it, flipped it, sold it. Right. I don't want to deal with the people. I like when you're dealing with the people, I like to deal with sophisticated buyers, right? Somebody buying an acre of land and a track in there. I don't have to build their home. I don't have to do anything. I'm out. All they got is the dirt. They understand dirt. Dirt's worth what it's worth. Fucking here you go. So that's where I look at it to until I can get about 1500 cows. Right. And then I'll only deal with cows and no more people. And then I'll be buying land for my cows. And we're like on the mission to do that people, over, the, great. Great. over the next yeah. 10 years. We're we're growing that herd to fifteen hundred. Some years beef will be up right now. Beef is up. And while everybody else is selling their cows because beef is up, we're not selling ours. We're yep. holding on to yep. them and feeding them so that we make more cows because there's a shortage of cows because of fires at auction barns and shit, which is really fucking weird. Another story for another day. <laughs> And which is how many auction and, barns that have been hit is wild. Yes. And I've because wild. and we're bailing hay <laughs> because while the population of cows are low, the need for hay is low. Mm -hmm. So we're storing hay when the population of cows gets built back up. Yep. We'll bring out the hay that we can store for seven years and sell it for three times what we had to fucking bail it for this year. Yep. And so it's it's the market bonds and stocks, cows and hay. It's the same shit, right? It's yep. the same. So in the meanwhile, we're flipping dirt. And then what we'll do, though, is the dirt that we sell, 
we'll fucking lease back to them at a fucking cheap ass price just to throw our cows on it and they'll mow the grass for them for free and we'll bail it for free as well. So we're like, I have this plan to go from flipping houses to flipping apartments to flipping land like I'm doing right now to developing land to ultimately flipping turnkey fucking ranches with food supplies worth millions and millions and millions of fucking dollars. So, That's it. So That's I powerful. see the fucking lineage of this shit. You know, I have the guy at the car, car wash the other day. He's like, what's the Caddo Ridge Ranch? And I was like, well, I'm a cattle farmer. And he goes, you're a real life goddamn John Dutton, huh? It's like, fuck, I am. I am. <laughs> I got Rip working for me and everything. I really fucking am. You Dude, know? we get after it out there. Yep. We're removing dead cows from creeks and shit. That's what we do. <laughs> What's up with that cow's carcass? Uh, it's about half gone. Oh, it's yeah. probably washed down the river by yeah. now. Oh, oh I didn't even. Oh. Beaver yeah. Lake, you remember it was as wide as this room yeah, where oh, we yeah. were? Now yeah. it's about 200 foot wide. I saw the videos. It's, it's fucking crazy. It's impressive. Deep. It's yeah. Pretty I deep. Don't, I didn't get in it, bro. No? The rapids were rough. You wasn't getting in it, man. Yeah. There's literally Easy. coming off of Party Lake into the the runoff. There's literally rapids, like like fucking crazy rapids, because the creek had overflowed. So how does that affect the house you're building out there? Dry as a bone. It's up on dry land. It's up, it's up the high. Just like the land it's behind the grade. office here. Yeah. Like, oh, it's wow. got a roof leak though. Don't worry. That yeah, the money pit still stands. <laughs> they got a roof leak. Oh, I didn't tell you uh, that. So the <laughs> sure the uh, creek back here, the land back here, we can't build on it. Because it's in a floodplain because it's too close to the creek. Right here? So, yeah. So, the ranch is kind of the same way, but the house is built so far away up. Because you drive up that hill to get to the house. It's yeah. not like that. It's like this. But the house is dry other than, I guess, a roof leak, which they'll fix. So, yeah. good news is it's an easy fix. Yeah. So. Well, stick to your standards. Build your empire. Fuck the and, haters. Uh, I like what Andrew Tate said best. I need my brother, a good woman, my dog, my cousin, my mom. And y'all leave me the fuck alone. Yep. <laughs> Standing on business podcast. Let's go. I got two. <laughs>